Hello everyone and welcome to day one of 12 days of BioPython, where I will be posting one video per day related to bioinformatics topics using BioPython until Christmas. I hope you will like it and please make sure to subscribe if you still haven't to support this initiative. Today's topic is about checking the quality of the reads coming from FASTQ file, so let's get started. So in today's lesson we are going to work with FASTQ file and check quality reads which we will extract from the file using BioPython. We are going to download a part of sequence data coming from 1000 Genome Project. And this file is going to be pretty small comparing to the other sequence data files. So each FASTQ file starts with monkey symbol following the sequence identifier and description. Next line is the sequence itself. The third line contains usually the plus symbol and the fourth line contains the quality reads for each base that is read on the line 2. First we need to download the FASTQ file from 1000 Genomes Project website using the wget command and store it locally so we can read it later using BioPython. The downloaded file is gonna be zipped. So when we will be opening our FASTQ file, we need to use gzpython library to first unzip it in order to read it. We will read and parse our downloaded FASTQ file using BioPython CKIO parse uh, functionality. If you are not familiar with this, I recommend you to watch one of my previous videos explaining the CKIO module. Here we read only one sequence of FASTQ file using iterator. We will see that when we parse the, the file, we can access all the details about the sequence which we store in the file. So for example, .id will give us access to the sequence identifier. Dot description will give us the description of the sequence. Dot seek is gonna give us back the sequence itself. We can also access the quality scores using this let dot letter annotation, which will give us back the dictionary contain containing the thread quality scores. So those are the quality scores of our reads per letter from the sequence itself. And thread quality scores are telling how accurate the quality of the read is. So if we get a score of 10, that means that the accuracy is 90%, meaning we can say that we are 90% sure that the red base is actually the correct base. Before we proceed further, I would like to mention that you never should do this. So why did we use iterator and read sequence by sequence from the file? So what does this do? It actually reads all the sequences from the file into the memory, and this can overflow our our memory of the machine. So this file is now pretty small, so this can fit, but usually the, this, the FASTQ files are much bigger than this. Never read everything into the memory. We will see now that we will always open the file, parse it and read sequence by sequence instead of reading everything at once. Now that we know how to read FASTQ file, we can first check the distribution of reads per nucleotide. We will use the iterator to read sequence by sequence and count the occurrences of each nucleotide. In the end, we are going to return the frequency of occurrences per nucleotide. We can see that there is occurrence of base N, which is an unknown base reported by sequencer. We can further investigate at which position in sequences base N occurs the most. We will go through the file again and count the occurrences of base n per position in sequence. Then we will plot the distribution of n's per position in sequence. Based on the plotted graph, we can see that up to position 25 there are no occurrences of base n, so there are no errors. And it seems that the quantity of base n is position dependent. So what about the quality of reads? Let's study the distribution of thread scores, the quality of our reads. This time we will ignore the first 25 bases and focus on checking the parts of the sequences where base n occurs the most. Again we go sequence by sequence and count the occurrences of quality scores per position ignoring the first 24 positions. We see that the highest quality score for this file is 40 and occurs most often. We can now further check the distribution of our quality scores ignoring the highest quality score and focus on the lower ones only. 
Again, sequence by sequence, we count the occurrences of quality scores per position, ignoring the first 24 positions and ignoring the quality score of 40. This will give us the following box plot, where we see how the quality scores of our reads kind of degrades how we move to the higher positions in the sequences. So we check the distribution of reads per nucleotide and the dis distribution of our quality scores. If you would like to know more about BioPython sequence objects and further manipulations you can do, you can check the chapter 3 and chapter 4 of BioPython tutorial that you can find on this link here. That was it for day 1 of 12 days of BioPython. Make sure to come back tomorrow to check the new video related to BioPython. See you there! Bye bye!